In this video, I'm gonna show you my Forex Pulse Swing Trading Strategy. Now, this is something you could possibly use, tweak, develop into your own trading. Um, it can be used in multi time frames, but being that it's more of a swing trading strategy, we're gonna move ourselves away from those very popular short term, five, 15 minute type uh, setups and go a bit further back because FX can offer some great opportunities for you to trade in the longer term. And I'm also gonna throw in a few technical analysis tips and hints for you, which could aid you in other parts of your trading. Hello, I'm Stephen Hode, founder and trader of The Stop Hunter. Firstly, a risk warning. Trading investing is a risky business and can be damaging to your wealth and your money is at risk. So always seek the help and advice of professionals and financial advisors before committing any of your funds to such an activity. And all the content of this video is for educational purposes, so please use it accordingly. So with that risk warning out of the way, let's crack on with today's strategy. Right now, before we can look at the charts and the actual setup, I need to give you the technical analysis tools we'll be using in this strategy. So we've got a Heikinashi chart, we've got Ichimoku Cloud, we've got Bollinger Bands, we got the directional moving indicator, we got moving average, and we've got the pivots. So here we have the system in its entirety on trading view charts. It's very simple and straightforward. It's made up of three charts. You can actually change that if you want to more charts or less charts, up to you, and you'll understand that as I explain the strategy. But on the left, we have a one day chart. Then on the top right, three hour, bottom right, one hour this is on the euro us dollar but it works across currency pairs um, you can try it on stock indexes or even commodities like gold oil or maybe more liquid stocks up to you um, give it a go and let me know in the comments below how you would get on with that but let's just focus on the elements of the uh, technical analysis strategy here and we'll focus in on the one day chart on the left hand side. Now we've got high Kanashi candles set up, that's to smooth out the data, get out some of that noise, make decision making easier, see make those trends you know a lot more straightforward. We've got a 50 moving average that actually changes colour from blue to green to green to blue as the trend changes. We have the Ichimoku uh, trading system on there, but I've stripped it all back just to be the cloud, so it's a trend filter. And then we have the Bollinger Bands set to 2.33 standard deviations and a 20 look back. And that is going to be for our um, stop setting. And we have pivot points for potential targets. Now on the daily one, they're set to monthly, the three hour set to monthly and the one hour set to weekly. That's because of the length of the time of the uh, trading strategy um, that we're trying to execute here by the different time frames. Now, what you'll notice below is the red and green lines. Now, that is actually the directional moving um, indicator, and I've tweaked that, and this is my technical analysis tip um, for this video. You can actually use this as a good um, entry exit type filter tool if you just modify it slightly. So I'm just gonna go into the, the variables and show you what you would normally get um, with this sort of view. You'd have your ADX line on there um, signifying the strength of the trend but I take that off and I then use the crossover points of the um, DMI lines the DMI plus sorry DI plus and DI minus and as you can see when the red goes above the green it's a sell and vice versa now I have a fast one and a slow one. So this is a slow one set to 50 periods and I have a fast one to seven. And what I'm looking for is those two to line up. So here on the euro dollar here, as the, we're already in the red phase, a down phase, but the other one, the slower one was actually green still. But when they change, I go up to the um, chart, the candlesticks. 
I look at the other variables. Now, you can be more aggressive by maybe wanting to enter once the 50 moving average is broken, you might go in on the close of that bar and go short. Or if you want to be more conservative, you can wait until the price goes down through the um, cloud. Or you could do you could do another thing where you could put one unit of risk on as it breaks down and another unit as it breaks down through the cloud further. So in this example here, uh, as that breakdown, so we're going to be more aggressive, I would use the Bollinger Band as the stop loss. So this is a one day chart. So the, tra you know, the trend and the trade we're looking for is probably going to be quite a few days in length. So I would put the stop around that Bollinger Band upper um, band and it also coincides with a monthly pivot point. So that's a strong point for me to start. So there you're look, roughly looking at a one to one trade at the moment over that period of time. So that there is the basic setup for the daily chart. But what we then do to um, build our positions is we go down to the three hour chart and we look for the, exactly the same lineup and it's the top right here. So we've got red and red going on. So we've got a down position here. It's below the moving average, it's below the uh, cloud and here you can see if we're using our stop you know the entry to this trade was about here and actually it's at the top of the pivot so I'd just move it maybe to the back of that cloud there or you could be more aggressive and stick it somewhere in it but key to this trade is we look at what's happening in the one day chart so if everything is negative here and we get a ne negative setup here then we do the trade, we go short. And then we go down to the one hour and we do exactly the same. We look at the three hour and the one day. If they're all saying short and it lines up short here, we go short. Now in terms of trade exit, you've got a few variables. You could use the pivot points. Uh, you could trail the stop down or you could use a risk return, maybe one and a half, two to one. Generally though, I'm looking for anything greater than one one but again if you come up with some methods let me know in the comments below but they're generally what I use or a change in the DMI you know if they're both were long and they go short you know the shorter one changes you can get out there so you've got options and again make sure you back test them uh, thoroughly before going live with any trading now the important thing of this trade type swing strategy is to um, trade size appropriately and I use blocks of risk here and I know that the one day trade is going to be a lot slower than the one hour trade so I use one unit of risk for the one hour trade two units of risk for the three hour trade and three units of risk for the one day trade what do I mean by that well if I'm risking say a hundred pounds on the one hour trade that means I'd risk 200 pounds on the three hour and 300 on the one day but you can change those variables it's basically saying that you know the one day trade is going to be a lot longer a lot slower but you want to get the same sort of returns so I'm balancing out those returns that's a crude example you know you can come up with your own methods but that's how I piece it together so I can have multiple positions going on in this euro USD at any one time in the different time frames you've got to be careful and remember and note what trades you do have on at any one time and I say it focuses in on the higher time frames, the momentum and the movement of the money and the flow of the money down from the higher time frames. And in technical analysis, that's more important to note when you're trying to make a trade decision. So it's taking into account that variable, lining up some simple tools and indicators to you know set you up for a great all-round strategy. So try it over. Like I say, you can play with different time frames if you want. I find that these work for me. Try it on the different markets, see what happens. And like I said, it's worked very nicely for me. A very simple strategy, and that really is all there is to it. If you're interested, to learn more about the technical analysis that I've been using or 
you're just interested generally, you want to dig in to that subject, in the description below I'm going to put a link to a lot of the courses I produce on various e-learning platforms, they're all nice uh, video, uh, easy access learning type courses and you know, like I say, if you want to get stuck into those, please do. If you need a broker to trade these type of FX strategies, again, I'll put some links in the description below. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you do use a strategy and you tweak it, adapt it, use it in different markets, let me know how you get on and you know what you've found works and what doesn't. Again, you know, remember this is an example. I do use it myself. Um, be careful. You know, that it's a risky thing trading, investing. Just make sure you've tested it thoroughly before deploying this type of strategy. Just don't go uh, out like you know, a headless chicken and try and trade it just because you've seen this video. Study it, learn from it, use it. Maybe just take the you know DMI um, tweak that I've shown you. Uh, about taking out the ADX line and use that in other strategies. Again, put your comments below in in that area. And if you want me to do any other reviews or any content that you'd like me to look at, again, stick that in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So I hope you've liked today's video. If you have, please give us the thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell buttons. And all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching and good luck with the trading.